is camera right and camera left. So keep that in mind. If, I, if someone says left or right, it's the camera left or right, not your left or right. It's always best to have your camera on a tripod because you want it as stable as possible. When it comes to dialogue, Anthony, there is something that's super obvious and super important. You never want it to sound fake, fake. right? You never want it to sound forced. One of the things we had talked about yesterday was that he uses a lot of dialect in his dialogue where people speak and it's not always grammatically correct. Yeah, because if everything is written grammatically correct in dialogue, it's going to sound like it was written before the moment, which is going to seem inauthentic and seem a little bit forced. But there's a problem. Sometimes you have a project that requires you to get a lot of specific information in it. It's the goal of the project is right. to communicate this information. So you have two opposing forces right now. I'm trying to make sure that I get my specific buzzwords and facts in there that are important to communicate and I need to make it feel authentic and natural and like it wasn't predetermined before they got here. With that in mind, right, especially this, this number one thing, we can't have a dialogue feel forced or fake. That's rule number one, right? With that in mind, looking at these four back and, uh, these back and forths here, was that goal accomplished? Does it, and, or are, does it need to be edged a little bit back way towards another way? Where, where do we feel like we're at as you read that? Without any you know, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I think it can be edited. Yeah. You can write things as you say them, right? So in the action scene lines, do I want them to have ungrammatically correct, complicated sentences? No. In the dialogue lines, is it okay if things are spelled incorrectly and have weird punctuation? Absolutely. Because have you heard me talking for the last five minutes? Yes. Have you thought about what that would look like on paper? where the dramatic pause comma comes in, where the dot, dot, dot ellipses is for the stare. Like, punctuation informs, right, how it's being said, especially as an actor, I can tell you. We look at this and we go, okay, all this punctuation, all these moments need to be filled with me, right? So I'm looking at this dialogue differently than the person writing it sometimes is because I'm trying to make it feel natural and unforced for me when I say it. What Josiah said, um, with the dialogue lines. I have sometimes issues with this as well. So the way that I do it, um, there's a lot of different variations on how to do this. I write exactly like what you guys wrote, what I'm thinking in my mind has to happen. And then for me as an actor, I take the lines and then I improv on the lines and that helps me. Sometimes I work with another person to just improv, record it, and write it down. But for example, your first line is, hey, is this 28 self portraits here? So I would think to myself, how, if I was talking to somebody I never met, how would I, how would I approach it? Hey, uh, is this 28 South Richard Street, right? Sometimes I would question it. Or would I say, yo, am I more friendly with them? Am I saying, yo, uh, do you see 28 South Richard Street? Look, there's a couple different tones. You can just think in your mind, take the line, and think about the way that you would ask that person. Where's the street at? I could read it so many different You can words. drop street. Yeah. And most people do. Most people say street. Say South Orchard. You just say yeah, South, South Orchard, Orchard right? Yeah. You can say hey, is this 28 South Orchard? My, the only change we might need to make in that first line to make it a tiny bit more authentic feeling is drop street. And keep in mind thinking about who you're speaking to. If the volunteer who opens the door is an elderly man, are you going to speak the same way that you would if it was me? If it's an elderly woman, are you going to speak the same way that you would if, if it was real? Right? So picturing who your audience is also sometimes helps inform the way you write about them. Ria jumps to a great point, which is Aaron Sorkin is an amazing writer. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's written a lot of famous movies like The Social Network, amongst other things, West Wing. Um, he just wrote uh, the Chicago 7, Trial of Chicago 7. Written a lot of famous movies, one of the best screenwriters out there. People don't touch his scripts, they don't cut things because it's poetry to them. And they just, it's already so well thought out that they just have to say the lines. Aaron Sorkin will tell you the reason why it's so well thought out is that he sits in a room by himself and plays all the parts and reads them out loud to himself like a crazy person. <laughs> Trying them out with different tones, with different styles and different ways. And amongst all the things that he does, that's one of the most important and the most helpful. And it's one of the things that I learned as an actor who wanted to read all the lines and be the star in every role. I'd sit in my room and read plays and I'd read all the characters back and forth and back and forth. And now when I write, I sit in rooms and I read everything out loud. When I work on essays with other people and I'm editing them, I read them out loud. Why is it important to hear words out loud? Because your brain usually catches things 
instead of like seeing it, you can hear it. It sounds like right you, but it won't right. sound right to other people. Exactly. Your, your ear and your brain are working on different planes. One of the most important things you can do as you're writing stuff, this is for your individual projects when we move forward from this, right? Is you have to sit in a room like a crazy person and read it to yourself out loud. There is no substitute. There is nothing that's going to be better than doing that. Because then you're going to hear a lot of the different ways and options that's going to inspire you to think differently about something you thought was very straightforward. And when you can do that, you can figure out things you didn't know were there. Thank you for that process of elimination. Because um, we already said 28 South Orchard and like the last line said, so it just sounded like it was repeating the word. Yep, yeah. redundancy is an enemy of efficient storytelling. A lot of going back to what another draft is, is going back and saying where is, are there redundant things that I can cut and clean and make sure that all the information is said clearly. And if you can trim out all the redundancies, all of a sudden it becomes really filled with white space. And white space is how you know a script has been worked on. Or never touched and worked on correctly. <laughs> but most things that are worked on poorly are overwritten rather than underwritten.